Yo guys, welcome back to another video. Today we've got a different type of video. I'm going to be going through the whole academy on the Chelsea FC website, the whole academy there, and telling you who the next, the next Mason Mount, the next Reese James, the next academy product to come through the academy, go out on multiple loans, and they get into the first team and win the Champions League with the first squad. Cap Mason Mount captaining uh, Chelsea against, was it Morecambe on Frank Lampard's last game? Reese James pocketing Raheem Sterling in the Champions League final. Two years before, he was at Wigan on loan, scoring in League One from the halfway line. Mason Mount was at Vitesse Arnhem three years ago, where Armando Brogia just got popped. I just said one already. But we're going to go through every single one. I'm going to tell you, you need to look out for. And I would uh, greatly appreciate if you like this video. Subscribe for the daily Chelsea videos coming out right now. And without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I have just realised this is going to take a lot longer than I was expecting. So we're just going to go through the players that I want to tell you about. So starting off, as you can see, we've got the keepers, goalkeepers. Lucas Bergström from Finland, Teddy Schaumann Lowe from England, Ethan Wadey from America, uh, from America um, and Carlo Zyga from Cro Croatia. Teddy Schaumann Lowe joined from Burton Albion. Now, I know about this guy because he was actually our first signing in the 2020-2021 season. Signing from Burton I can't remember how much it was. Was it a free or something? Um, we signed him. Uh, it was Frank Lampard's first signing of, the, of his second season. Um, and then we sent him straight back out on loan to Burton. He was like playing on the bench for them. He is literally about 18, 17. He's 17. Or well, he's literally just turned 18 10 days ago. He does look young there as well. He's from Leicester. Um, yeah, so this guy... If he's playing League One football, obviously it does say he was on the bench for seven games. In part of Burton's academy, I feel I feel like he was playing games because why else would we, he go straight back? Maybe he was playing a couple, but I, look out for this guy because this guy is going to be a good keeper. I'm telling you, I've seen a little bit about him, um, and he is. Yeah, he's a good keeper and he's so young. What, seven, just turned 18. And he's already playing for Chelsea, or not playing for Chelsea, but in a Chelsea academy, in a Chelsea, uh, in a Burton team, first team, who are League One, I, or champ, yeah, League One. Um, but there we go with all the keepers. Let's move on to defenders. We've got Trevor Chalaba. He can play midfield. I, th I know him more of as, as a midfielder, but he has been playing centre-back uh, for Thomas Tuchel's friendly teams at the moment. And this guy, I'm telling you, he plays so much older than he is. Than he is. He's 20, 22, just turned 22, 24 days ago. But he, he's so good in the ball. He's tall, he's massive. But um, he, he was on loan at Lorient in France last season. Younger brother of Nathaniel Chalaba, who is playing for Watford right now. Um, just got promoted. There he is with Mason Mount. And is that Josh Brooking, the guy we just last looked at? I hope so. Oh, it looks like him. Could it be someone else? Probably. Probably is somebody else. Anyway, um, yeah, won the FA. The FA was it the FA Youth Cup? Yes, in the 2015-16 season, the FA Youth Cup final. Um, they're so. England won the Youth World Cup in like 2018, I think it was. Mason Mount was in that team. Dominic Solanke, Tammy Abraham. I'm pretty sure Trevor Challer would have been there as well. Um, yeah, so he was on loan at Ipswich, then switched to Huddersfield, and then Lorien uh, in Ligue 1. Um, and now he is back. I don't know if he'll go on another loan deal. Probably. I don't think he'll be good. Oh, there he is tackling Mason Mount in the Championship when he was at Derby. But um, I don't know if he'll be in the first team very soon. We've got Bashir Humphreys. Can't tell you too much about him. But next one, Xavier Umbiamba, the Dutch defender. He's a beast. He's a monster. Left Barcelona's academy to join Chelsea. He's the next Van Dijk. He's like six foot three. He's tall, right footed. He plays, enjoys playing the ball at his feet. I think he's like six foot five. He is huge. He did have a, a knee injury. I think he did his ACL or something. And if he did knee, knee in, if normally ACL is a footballer, um, towards the start of his Chelsea career. Um, but this guy, 
I'm telling you, he could be one of the next best defenders. He is he's so tall, athletic, like it says there. Um, and this guy, what is he, 19? He's a he's a baller, I'm telling you. 18, soon to turn 19. And he's also got a new haircut. I'll put that on the thumbnail. Next up, Ian Matson. He's a left back, five foot seven, so quite short. Um, Dutch. He's got a few cousins, I think. I was on transfer mark. He said he had a few. Oh, cousin of Dalian Matson, a brother of Darren Matson. Um, he is yeah, nineteen, quite short for a left back, but he can play centre back. He's he's very quick. He's very quick. He was on loan at Charlton. Uh, came from the PSV uh, uh, Academy. Joined the Chelsea under 18s. I spent a couple of years in the academy in the under 18s. Then went from the under 23s to Charlton. And then last season he was at Charlton. But next season he, I think he's either already agreed or about to agree a deal to Coventry. I, I have a feeling it's Coventry. But he is a very good player. And when we had a bit of a problem with Marcus Alonso and Emerson playing left back. There were calls for Ian Matson to come into the first team because we saw with Rhys James coming into the first team at right back, Mason Mount. There were calls for Ian Matson. I think it was a little bit too early for him uh, considering he had just joined like a year earlier. But um, this guy, he's going to be a good left back. He's a career mode gem as well. Um, yeah, Charlton in League 1. League 1? What? No, League 1. Um, scored his first professional goal against Doncaster playing as a right winger. A position he found himself in frequently while away. So he's very versatile. You see, oh, what's that player? Corne in France for Lyon. He was a right wing. He was a right winger. Now he's a left back. And now Leeds, I think, are interested. Or was it? That's no, Bernie. That's Bernie. Um, yeah, he's a, 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 a young, versatile player. You love to see it. And this guy could be a good defender or attacker wherever he sees fit. Or wherever Thomas Tuchel sees fit. But not next season, but I think this 2022-2023 season will be his breakthrough, breakthrough season into the Chelsea squad. Sam McClelland, couldn't tell you too much about from Northern Ireland, I think that is. Dino Simu, a centre-back who has just joined Southampton, so a bit frustrating. Then we go on to Dujon Sterling. He's one of the oldest at the in the academy since he was eight, it says here. He's in the Chelsea academy. He's a right back, but can play right wing back. He's probably better there. Look, Tomori, Abraham, Dujon Sterling. He's been he's been in the academy for a while. He's absolutely rapid. So he spent our season on loan at Coventry in 2018. Um, then joined Wigan for 2019-20, but then pulled his hamstring midway through the season. Um, Latics. No, I don't know what that means. Is that their nickname? So he only got 10 outings for Wigan. Uh, he was on loan somewhere at the start of the season, 2020 to 21, but came back halfway through. He was training with the first team and Thomas Tuchel uh, involved him in the first team squad for training and he was apparently very impressed with him. So put him into the academy um, for games, but trained with the first team often. And obviously he was playing in a friendly against Bournemouth and training with the team recently. And I feel like he could get some game time next season. If we don't sign a right wing back, we've obviously... <coughs> we're close to Jules Kunde. So Reese James will be playing right back, right wing back more than right centre back. Um, we'll go into the next defender who... We need to keep him. We need to keep him. But we'll, I'll tell you who it is in a second. But I feel like Dujan Sterling could get some game time. I don't think he'll go out on another loan because his loans haven't been particularly... Um, what's the word? Good. <laughs> Haven't been particularly helpful, I guess. Um, but next one, Tino Livramento from Croydon, right back or right wing back. He likes to get forward and attack. He's a very attacking modern fullback. He's absolutely rapid. Signed as an under nine. It's mental these things. Signed as an under nine, and he won. He won academy graduate of the year last season. And you see the the Academy Player of the Year uh, from the year before. It's probably who was it? I don't know. But like, it's like likes of Mason Mount, Tamori, Abraham, Reese James, Callum Hudson Odoi, Billy Gilmore was last season's. He won it, and they're all getting into the first team. So if leave if Tino Livramento does stay, I feel like he could get in front of Dujon Sterling first of all, 
considering look when he was born 2002 november the 12th so that makes him 18 17 18 oh my god he's yeah he's 17 soon to turn 18 no 18 soon to turn no i don't know but he's a young baller and he is going to be a big player but his contract ends at the end of this season and he's yet to extend the contract so unless we lose him on a free next summer it looks like we could be selling him for a fee this summer with brighton looking close to signing him apparently it would be a huge loss i think if we lost tino livermento as he does look like he'd be a great player for the future but i guess if he wants game time same with Tarek lamptey brighton's not a bad place to do it especially as a right wing back getting into the first team every week so while editing i realized that this video would take a lot longer than i was expecting i may have gone into a little bit too much depth with some of the players um and i always tend to waffle on these type of videos i go on for way too long i will be trying to work on that i've got a lot of videos planned like this like loads of videos but part two will be released maybe tomorrow uh, it's all edited, I'll just upload it tomorrow on the midfielders and the attackers. But I feel like this is a nice way to end part one on Tino Livermento. Please stay, mate. But um, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoy it. Uh, enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Watch out for part two if you enjoyed this one. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.